Okay, so songs you heard a million times, you played a thousand times. And suddenly you're like, wait, what is that? There's something going on that everybody, including me, seemed to miss. So it happened to me again with probably Stevie Ray Vaughan's most covered song, Pride and Joy. That is how I used to play it forever, and it always felt sort of right, but I also realized I'm no Stevie, so getting close was good enough. But there's an element that I've been ignoring, and it's such a trivial part of why this riff sounds so amazing. So here's the guitar riff, sort of isolated from the rest, and in my mind there's something happening that wasn't really possible, let's have a listen. <laughs> Do you hear it? Okay, so I want you to pay attention to these high steps. Do you hear they are happening every off beat? So there's the one and two and three and four and on each of the ands. One and two and three and four and. So and this is how I played it. So first of all, it's definitely not as clean as TV's, but more importantly, the steps are not played every offbeat. So that breaks the entire shuffle pattern that's going on. So then I wondered, why don't I play these high steps over there? And what I found out <laughs> confused me even more. How on earth does he do that? Okay, let me explain by writing a quick tap. So here's the bass line. So now let's fill in the steps. So let's just pick the highest two strings. Every offbeat. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and. There we are, let's see. And now we see that the second step over here falls together with the G sharp on the low E string, like fret four. How does that work? How do you play both at the same time while keeping that strumming motion going on? What? How Let's listen to the isolated guitar again. Okay, so there's three things that stand out to me. First of all, that G sharp note, fret four on that low E string, does not get the emphasis of the other bass note. A lot of people overplay the G sharp. But only the bass notes you do hear clearly are the E, the G, the B, and the C sharp. Right? Second, is that G sharp note even there? Well, yes, and let me prove it. So here's the G. And here's the stab on the offbeat. So this is the G note. And you see it clearly in the spectrum analyzer as well. G. So on the offbeat following that G should be the G sharp. Let's see if I select it. Ah, yes. Here's the G sharp clearly. And over here too. And you hear it below that high stab. And also if you do the G first. You hear the bass note going half step up. So it's definitely below that high step. It's a little less prominent, of course, because that step is on top, sort of masking that G sharp underneath, but it's definitely there. Another obvious giveaway is just looking at him playing it live. Now you clearly see him playing that fourth fret with his ring finger. So in third, there is some discussion about whether these steps are muted or open strings. And to my ear, it falls a little bit in between, but it's definitely not all muted, because you clearly hear, hear those high E's on top. You see? It is played very staccato though. So it almost sounds muted, but it's definitely there is some pitch going on in these high steps. So I tried learning it and it was difficult. 
really difficult. So to play this riff the same way as Stevie, you gotta play the highest string sort of open, mute the middle two or the middle three ones, the G, D, and the A, and then play the fourth fret on that low E string. So I'm muting this with my index finger, which is touching the G and the D string. And the A string is muted by my middle finger playing that G sharp with the flash. So now if I play that stab, I'm also fretting that G sharp. But to play it amidst of that fast riff, that's an all other story. So I practiced playing the G sharp to B. Sort of like that. And then I tried to pick up the pace. compare that to the mister himself. It's so staccato and tight, even more than I'm doing it right now. So note that after all the steps, I'm muting the steps with my left hand, my fretting hand, just hitting the strings and the note dies because the right hand or the picking hand is busy playing the strings, right? Do you notice the circular picking hand movement by the way? Definitely try that out because you'll sound more like Stevie. His shuffle rhythm isn't as strict the triplet feel, but it's a little more stretched out. And I think that motion really helps with accomplishing that goal. So before we go to the hammer-on technique you might be using for this riff, I wanted to let you know that if you're into this kind of stuff, I made a guitar course called Next Level Playing. It's where we go over solos, over rhythm guitar, over chords, over music theory and how everything comes together within the instrument. On the end of each module, there's a cool guitar solo going through all the techniques we learned in that module. I think it's a really awesome learning tool for everyone that takes the guitar serious. So check it out at nextlevelplaying.com for more information on the course. Thank you. Doing this for a while, I noticed that I did a hammer-on from G to G sharp as well. Just to make sure you're hearing it, even if the pick doesn't make it all the way to that sixth string. It's not the end of the world then, because you still hear the note from that hammer-on. You see, and then just play these high two strings. So it might be just as well as Stevie is doing that hammer-on technique, but he's also muting the middle two strings anyway. Better safe than sorry, right? Then we go to the four chord and he does exactly the same. And that is how it goes till the end with the little solo. It's such an iconic intro, man. So I'm not really there yet or my standard is a little bit higher because I want to feel comfortable playing this technique without thinking too much about it. And these high steps are not yet ingrained into my system. But I think it's already so much better sounding than how I played it. Let's compare them. <laughs> Tiny little things make all the difference, right? Excellence is in the details. And if there's one guitarist that made sure that all the details were 100% on point, it was Stevie. Stevie Ray Vaughan, man, such an iconic player and there's so much to learn from his stuff. It's just bizarre. And of course, show me your Stevie Ray Vaughan as well. Use the hashtag Paul Davids and Stevie Ray Vaughan and Pride and Joy, of course. And tag me on Instagram at Paul Davids Guitar. I'd love to see all those takes. Thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day. And I see you next week with another video. Cheers. Whew.
Oh, Stevie, man. 